why was Albert Einstein so adamant on the cosmological constant that the universe is static? And later he had to delete it from his field equations. What does it say about the scientific community's temperament against the inflow of new and exceptional ideas? Uh, one more example could be that of Avi Loeb, who says Oumuamua could be an extraterrestrial object, but he was completely sidelined. Uh, P.S. It would <laughs> be great if you could call Avi to a podcast. He is a great speaker. Explains complex ideas beautifully. Okay, so interesting. Uh, thank you for the recommendation. Uh, let's see if I can uh, do that. So the question is about the uh, cosmological constant. So what is this cosmological constant? So in 1915, Albert Einstein published his general theory of relativity. In 1905, he published the special theory. In 1915, he published the general theory of relativity. In the general theory of relativity, you have the very important equation called the field equation of general relativity, which relates the mass, energy, mass and energy with gravity. And it replaced the older uh, law of gravitation, which is Newton's law of gravitation. So what you have, according to the Einstein field equation, is that the curvature of space-time is intricately uh, related to the amount of matter and energy that is passing through that uh, that region of space-time, right? So that's the Einstein field equation. If you want to understand what the equation is, it says R mu nu minus one half R g mu nu is equal to eight pi eight pi g up, 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 above c upon c raised to four times t mu nu. So that is the uh, field equation. It's not a single equation. It's a set of ten equations looks very simple. It's a system of 10 partial differential equation uh, equations which relate the mass and energy to the curvature of space-time. Right. So this uh, set of equations, it matches Newton's law of gravitation for weak gravitational fields. Now, what we find, so what Albert Einstein did is that he, uh, he uh, what he did was he approximated the universe as having a constant density in all directions. So if you look at the universe, it has mass in some places, it is empty in some places, but if you zoom out to very large scales, then you find that it has, you could approximate it as having a constant mass energy density in all directions. So Einstein did that approximation and he was able to solve the equations for a simplified toy universe with constant density everywhere. And what he found is that the, uni the equations, the solutions, they give you something they will either cause the universe to contract or expand, right? So that's what his equations were telling him, that the universe will either contract or expand. But in those days, in 1950s, in 1915, in the in maybe in 1920, the data, the information that we had was that the universe was static. It was unchanging. It was neither expanding nor contracting. Those days, the only knowledge we had was that of the Milky Way galaxy. And we thought, scientists in those days thought that the Milky Way was the entire universe. Right. So that was the scientific consensus. That's what the best observations showed. Now in the 1920s, Edwin Hubble, an American uh, astronomer, he, uh, took, he, uh, he observed that the Milky Way was just one galaxy. There were lots of galaxies beyond the Milky Way. And he also discovered that these galaxies beyond the Milky Way were all getting more and more distant from us. They were all receding from us in all directions, which indicates that the universe is not static. It is expanding. Right. So before this information was available, Einstein realized that his field, this, he, his field equations, they would make the universe expand or contract. Uh, so what he did was he introduced an, an additional term, which is which is the cosmological constant. And what this constant does is to is that in order to counteract the contraction of the universe, it produces an, a net outward force. It's like a repulsive gravity kind of force to balance out the contraction of the universe, right? So that's what it did. And later on, when he when it was discovered that the universe is actually expanding, then he realized that my field equations were telling me this all the time, and I I inserted this equation, which should, which with this this term in the equation, which may not have been necessary. So he called the cosmological constant that he inserted into the field equations his greatest blunder, right? So that's what he did. 
it is uh, denoted by the, the by the greek term lam- lambda now in the late 1980s or ni- late 1990s it was discovered that the universe is not just expanding but the expansion of the universe is accelerating the universe is expanding faster and faster the expansion is accelerating and this term the cosmological constant that had been deleted from the field equations now had to be reintroduced because it because it represents an uh, an anti gravity kind of force a negative gravity kind of force that causes the expansion of the universe so einstein's greatest blunder actually <laughs> was valid right and that's what we nowadays consider to be dark energy so nobody forced albert einstein to delete the cosmological constant from his field equations he did that himself because it was discovered new data came into uh, was was new data was made available and based on the new data he realized that there was no need for it but after his death in the late 90s it it was again realized with the introduction of uh, of even more data that yes we need such a term in the einstein field equations because the universe is expanding and the exp- ex- expansion is accelerating so that is the story in brief in rough about the uh, cosmological constant now when it comes to the scientific community the temperament against like akash says inflow of new and exceptional ideas it's always been there whether it is the scientists whether it is it is any other community there's always this resistance towards new ideas nobody likes new ideas for instance we have had this stranglehold of the of the string theory mafia in theoretical physics for many decades if you look at the us most of the funding in in physics in theoretical physics goes into string theory so if you want to have a career in theoretical physics physics in the us you need to be in string theory these days it's been like that for a very long time nowadays there are questions have been raised about it and all so it's always been like that so there is always this group think mentality there is always this uh, thinking by consensus and uh, that's always been there so and that that's one of the reasons why uh, there is no new there has been no new real breakthrough in theoretical physics since 1980 since uh, since the theory of inflation was introduced by uh, alan guth there was 1980 or 81 after that there has been no new genuine breakthrough theoretical breakthrough that is supported by uh, experimental observational evidence since 1980 or 81 so theoretical physics has hit a brick wall because of this group think mentality because of the temperament against the inflow of new and exceptional ideas and like you say uh, avi loeb said that oumuamua could be an extraterrestrial object and the entire scientific community condemned that why it is certainly possible it could be an extraterrestrial alien object but uh, so there was a very very strong backlash against this theory which is perplexing that's not how you you're supposed to behave as a scientist so you have all these problems in science today